allow me to dazzle you with a few figures. Did you know that in the US, 20 people die each day while waiting for a transplant? Every 10 minutes, someone new is added to the organ donation list. And in the US, 59% of those on the organ donation list are people from ethnic minority communities. African Americans make up 28% of that. And 83.7% of those waiting for an organ in the US are waiting for a kidney. In the UK where I live, as of March 2019, over 6,000 people are active on the organ donation list. Over 1,800 of those are people from the black, Asian, and ethnic minority communities. And between the 1st of April 2018 and the 31st of March 2019, 408 people died while waiting for a transplant. Now, 31% of the people on the organ donation list are waiting um, for a kidney in the UK are people from ethnic minority communities. But there's hope because next year, a new law is coming into effect, which means everyone is automatically on the organ donation list. And if you don't want to be on the list, you have the choice to opt out. Now, so far, we haven't even started you know, with the new law. 79% of people from the black, Asian, and ethnic minority community have already opted out. 19.5 are black, 54.1 are Asians. And so the question is, why are we afraid of becoming organ donors or even engaging in the conversation about organ donation? What makes us uncomfortable? or what scares us about organ donation. Now, according to research, sometimes the reasons that people give um, is because one, it's against their religion, two, it's against their culture, or in the case of um, relatives who've just lost a loved one, they feel like they are, they are, you know, their loved one has already suffered enough, they don't want them to go through that again. Or some people simply just don't believe in organ donation. But my favorite reason is when someone tells you, well, I'd like to go back to heaven with my whole body. <laughs> now, you may wonder why I know so much about organ donation. I started living on dialysis when I was 16 years old, and I lived on dialysis for six good years. At the age of 22, I got my first kidney transplant, and this really gave me a second chance at life. I cannot even begin to tell you how it changed my life. I was able to go back to university, um, did a full degree, did a postgrad, gained enough experiences to start applying for jobs. But beyond that, I was able to really live my life. It gave me back freedom to just leave. And that is what you do when you become an organ donor and give that gift to someone else. You give them their lives back. Because when, in my case, when you're on dialysis, you're practically living in limbo. You cannot plan. Trying to plan for a holiday is like preparing to go to the moon, you know? And to even get travel insurance to come to the Netherlands just this weekend was a whole lot of work. That's one of the many things that comes with living on dialysis. It opens your life. It takes up so much time. And sometimes it's more than you're willing to pay for it, the price it takes. For me, I go for dialysis three times a week, four hours each. That's 12 hours of my life that I will never, ever get back. And then I have to recover and get my strength back. Now. Now, having had this experience, the first images of me as a 16-year-old when I started dialysis, the second is my 21st birthday, my date was a dialysis machine. Now, when I had my first transplant at 22, guess what happened? I was able to go back to university, like I said. I became a journalist. These are some of the powerful African women I've interviewed. And nobody can ever take that away from me because somebody gave me the gift of a second chance. And that is exactly what you do when you become an organ donor. 
Unfortunately, in 2017, I needed another transplant because in 2012, I had a rejection episode. My second transplant did not go according to plan. I had it July 2017, and by January 2018, it was taken out because it just wasn't working and it made me very sick. And so this is the other side of organ donation and transplantation. Sometimes it doesn't go according to plan. But here's the thing, it does not negate my belief that we should all give that precious gift to someone else, either as living donors or in debt. You might say, what if it doesn't work like my second transplant? Hello, what if it works and gives you 15 good years of freedom? And so going back on dialysis for the second time, I remember walking into the dialysis unit and seeing the number of black people, Africans, people of African Caribbean heritage on dialysis, and it broke my heart. And instantly, I just knew that we need to move from a comfortable place of not talking about it because it feels like this barrier had been you know, created around the subject and it was a taboo subject and it was better to just leave it there for, the, you know, for other people to deal with and not necessarily us. And so this year, my friends and I created a social media campaign about organ donation in the black African and African Caribbean community in the UK. And the goal really is to challenge us as black people, as human beings when we tap into our humanity, as well as the global black diaspora to say, there is a challenge here, we need to address it, we need to talk about it. Now, this past summer, I declared it as my summer of daring greatly, because come you know, January next year, it will be two years since I came back on dialysis. And the reason I declared in my summer of daring greatly was because in April I'd been found in my flat unconscious and unresponsive. And that episode left me in a deep depression. One of the things I did was apply for a job as an editor, knowing combining with dialysis would be very difficult. But guess what? I did, I got it, and now I'm the editor of Salamta. The in-flight, the, the, that second image is the campaign we did online. It's on my Twitter page, you can read more about it. And um, I got the job and became the editor of Salamta, the in-flight magazine for Ethiopian Airlines, the biggest airline on the African continent. And I remember getting the job and thinking, oh my goodness, what did I just sign up for? But this is what I want to leave with you. The reason, I got the job by the way, I told my employer about my health situation and they were cool with it. Now, the reason I'm able to do this job right now, because it gives me so much joy, it's really hard to combine it with work, but it's because 15 years ago, someone gave me the gift that allowed me to rebuild my life, gain the skills I needed. And that's what I want to say to you and to everyone. We need to move from fear to a position of faith. Because when we give that gift, you're not just changing somebody's life. You're giving them the miracle, the second chance, and the freedom to be. Thank you.